guys, I have a great set of two games lined up ready for you. Um, I'm playing against this guy who is also experimenting with a stealth kit deck. So in this set of two games, you'll see me playing my stealth kit against his HP. And in the next game, you'll see him playing his stealth kit against my HP. That should be a very fun watch. Now, this is my opening hand. And I can tell you right now that this is the best opening hand that you can ask for with my deck. A sure gamble to buffer the install cost of professional contacts, a refractor and a cloak so that you can run on turn one without worrying about any ice at all, and a modded which you can use to install any interface or black cat depending on what you draw. It is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I definitely cannot ask for a better opening hand than that. It is really, I can't think of a better opening hand. Alright, so what I do is on my first turn, I play very aggressively, I install both items and a show gamble, and then I run to see what, uh, yeah, to try to make him rest his eyes, but he doesn't rest his eyes. Instead, he lets me see the top card of R&D, which turns out to be a seesaw, so I definitely know what to expect from this deck, which is a good thing because, um, Firstly, I know, I'm more or less quite sure that he's not going to spend his influence on other weird cards, and more importantly, I know what to draw for. So, usually on my second turn, I'll continue running, but I cannot take the risk of him um, see scorching me, because he could have a scorched up in hand. In fact, there's a good chance, there's a decent chance that that might happen, and I don't want my game to end prematurely. So I do not run, instead I install Proko and draw up. Very soon I find my Kitty Jones, and I start loading her up as well. Um, now I'm still very low on credits, 5 to 16, so running is not an option. If he has two scorches in hand, I'm, it's game over. The chances are not that high, but it could very well happen. So I decide to instead continue drawing up and gaining more money with Kitty. You'll soon see why later. Anyway, I don't think he can score any agendas anytime soon. He needs a lot more traction in order to score agendas. And he's definitely not going to go for the 7 uh, point. 7 pointer power turn anytime soon. Alright, I have what I'm looking for. I diesel into a plus creed. There we go. So, this is one very important thing. If you know your deck very well and you know exactly what's in your opponent's deck, you know what to do, what exactly you should do as the runner in order to counter your opponent. In this case, my goal was to draw up until I find my plus creed and then I play it. And this is why the opening model is so important. I could install it for cheap. Uh, the moment I drew it, and I didn't have to discard that many cards. You notice that after the diesel, I had so many cards in hand, but when I modded out the plus creed, I was playing two cards in the span of one click, so I didn't have to discard that many cards. Alright, so now I can start safely running as long as I have four more cards in hand. So he raises two next silvers. I have a SMC out, I installed that earlier, knowing that I needed to tutor something, and sure enough, it comes into play. I tutor my black cat. Busting it through for one stealth credit. And that's another point of foresight that I had. Instead of breaking the first snake silver with my stealth credit, I use a credit for my credit pool instead. Anyway, I had so many credits, so it didn't matter. That stealth credit came in very handy when breaking multiple subroutines with Black Cat. So that I definitely came out on top of the exchange there. You must be very careful when, uh, from where you're going to spend your credits if you're playing a stealth deck. Spending your stealth credits from the wrong source could cost you the game. Alright, I find another modded and I find an RD interface so that hits the table and I run all the way through. Sneak Dog Beta is a much more tempting option to be very honest, however, he can ice that up very quickly and I'm waiting for my HQ interface before I uh, run with Sneak Dog. That will ensure more efficiency. So on my uh, RD interface run, I snap 5 agenda points. He must have gotten very unlucky there, because if there's one place that agendas are supposed to clump up, it's HQ, not R&D. And the, judging by the way he has been icing up his HQ, you can figure out that he's pretty much HQ flooded. So for him, for me to have top deck 5 points of agendas on top of R&D in just 2 cards is very unlucky for him, because you have to figure out he has a lot of agendas in R&D, uh, in HQ, and I don't think I can get through HQ too easily. Alright, he shows me an ice wall. That's a very desperate <laughs> installation considering that I only need to pay one credit to get past the ice wall that he installed for three credits. So I run through, I see two new cards. The Vitruvius, that's game. 
he got a very unlucky game, let me tell you that. I how many cards did I see this game? One, two, three, four, four, five? I don't think I saw more than five cards this game. Um and yeah, I basically hit a, an agenda every time I access, which is very, very awful for him. Um yeah, but this deck can work wonders and with that very powerful opening hand, uh, it's very hard for him to compete against me. And the moment I nullified his other winning condition, which was Sea Scotch, uh, he would have found it very difficult to close up the game, even though he's probably running Biotics as well. Thing is, it's very, very hard to... Uh, plus Creed is really a silver bullet. It's, uh, it's a binary thing. If you have it, you're going to do well against Tag and Back. If you are not, if you don't have it, you're going to struggle quite badly because the only other way to survive is to keep a floor of credits or build their cards. So yeah, Plus Creed is getting more and more important, especially in the kit deck, because this kit deck doesn't use the conventional uh, economic backbone that most other competitive decks use, like uh, prepaid uh, economy or Magnum Opus economy or cash like Esox Pawn Shop. My deck has none of those, and so it actually does very badly in terms of chalking up credits. The only reason why I was so rich the game was because I found an early Kitty Jones and I basically hit her every single turn. Along with Prof Cortex, which definitely uh, pulled its worth here. Installing it on turn 2 and using it pretty much every single turn multiple times thereafter, it definitely paid itself off and even more. So this game I didn't have to hit his HQ at all, but even if I had to, if I didn't score so many agendas, uh, the sneak door beta was there, and that definitely would have hit one, if not two agendas, even without a HQ interface. So that's the power of multi-server treasure kit with a stealth rate that is very quick to set up. Thanks for watching, and happy net running. Do remember to tune in for the second game, which I'll upload soon. See you around.